Now we all know about Peking duck pancakes, but why don't we take the duck out and replace it with crispy pork belly? This is so good. I'm gonna show you how to make your pork perfect every single time. Now I'm gonna be using a 10 piece set. This has a detachable handle, so we'll pop that on because we're going to start on the hob and then finish the pork off in the oven. So we're going to just heat this pan up. You don't want it to be too hot, just on a medium heat. We're just going to start the cooking process with a few aromatics. So some onion that I'll thinly slice just half is fine and that'll go into the pan with just a tiny splash of oil. You want a tiny splash because the fat from the pork is going to render out so there's going to be a lot of fat coming out of this. We just want these onions to get a little bit of colour. Okay so in with the onions. To that I'll add two cloves of garlic. Leave the skin on. We're just bruising just want to bring out some of the flavour of that garlic so that can also go into our pan along with some ginger. Now I'm just going to roughly slice this ginger. I've given a wash but we want skin and all for this, okay? Okay, in that goes. Just give that a coating with the oil and just let that sizzle away for a moment. Now onto the pork. We want a small amount of vegetable oil on the skin. Now what I've done is taken this pork out of the packaging and allowed it to air dry in the fridge uncovered. By doing that, we're drying that skin. The drier the skin, the crispier the crackling is going to be. I've also scored this. If you don't want to score it, just ask your butcher to do it. We'll turn it over and add a very small amount of oil again on the flesh side. And then we need to season the pork. So a good pinch of salt on one side and then we'll turn it over and we'll add that to our skin side too. This will also help that crackling get super crispy. Preheated my oven to 220, so a really hot oven to start with. And this pan goes into the oven too. So on with our pork. We're going to cook it for about 30 minutes or until we get that crispy crackling. Then I'm going to turn the oven down to 160 degrees, add about a cup of chicken stock to the pan and then continue cooking it for an hour or until that meat is tender. Okay, you can't have crispy pork belly pancakes without a plum sauce. And I'm going to make a homemade one. So into a pot, I'll add some water, about a quarter of a cup, along with some prunes. Now prunes are just dried plums. So when plums are out of season, I like to use prunes for this sauce. In actual fact, they make the sauce really molassesy and sticky. So I really suggest using the prunes. Some Chinese five spice, along with some brown sugar some vinegar, just apple cider vinegar or any vinegar you like, and some black bean sauce. Finally, some light soy sauce. Now all this is going to come up to the boil and we'll just cook it off for a little bit. Then I'll place this in a jug and with a stick blender, blend it until it's smooth. All right, the pork has come out of the oven. Look how gorgeous this is. In fact, have a listen to this. Crispy crackling, that's what it's all about. I have allowed it to rest in the pan. You want it to cool down slightly before you slice into it. Now for the pancakes, these are Chinese pancakes you can get from all good Asian grocery stores. They come frozen, so get a couple of them, pop them in the freezer for next time you wanna make these. So I've got a steamer basket and that's on a 24 centimetre pan. Just be really careful when you do this because steam is super hot. And we'll just place them in there just on a piece of baking paper. Lid goes on and we'll just steam them while we slice into this beauty. So we'll take that out of its beautiful juices onto a board. And I like to use a serrated knife, it's just much easier to get through the crackling. Straight down the centre. Let's have a look. Ooh, so juicy and tender. We'll pop this one just in the pan for a moment and then we can slice this. So just where we scored it, that's the easiest way to slice the pork. And last little bit. Oh, <laughs> it's just the best sound ever. Now we wanna cut these into bite-sized pieces because we wanna be able to place them into a pancake easily. So I suggest cutting them in half again. Oh, fantastic. Now, I like to serve this in a generous way on a big platter with the classics, that homemade plum sauce that I've blended. We've got some spring onions, cucumber, a little coriander, and then we're just going to place these pieces of pork onto our platter, line them up. Ooh, looks great. And 
and our pancakes. Take that lid off. They've steamed up nicely. Take them out. Woo, hot, hot, hot. And then we'll place them onto our tray. Now, we should definitely make one of these. I've got to try it just to make sure it's absolutely perfect. So I'm going to grab a little steamed pancake. I'll start with some of this plum sauce. Nothing like homemade plum sauce. Some cucumber, essential spring onions. Not essential is the coriander, but I think it's quite a nice touch with this. And a little piece of pork with lots of crackling. Wrap that up and dig in. Now, I know this is traditionally done with duck, but you know what? This pork, well, it certainly takes the cake. It is amazing. 